Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here, coming at you live from IT Nation Secure in Orlando, Florida, and back with another quick interview. And I am joined by one of the K9 for Warriors members. Tim is here, and his dog Coop. You can't see him in the picture, but I will have one later. So uh, Tim had a few minutes to uh, come by and chat with us. Tim, how you doing? Hey, doing well. All Thanks right. for having me. So this is a uh, kind of like a child for IT Nation where they've been supporting K9 for Warriors for the last couple of years. Uh, and you guys are back. Uh, for people that don't know, can you quickly give us, you know, what K9 for Warriors is doing? Yes. Um, you know, for people like me, um, K9 for Warriors is doing wonderful things, not only for me, but for veterans of all branches, um, you know, especially those of us who have... Uh, have gone to combat uh, a time or two. Me, I've been to combat four times, spent over five physical years of my life in the combat zone. Um, but, but you know, when we come back, there, there's many things, uh, multiple things that can, uh, you know, um, happen. And, and, and one of the things that, that is, is, is that a lot of us, you know, we have anxiety issues. Um, we have um, post-traumatic stress. Uh, some of the things that makes it hard to fit back into um, mainstream America. Uh, and so K9 for Warriors is doing a wonderful job because they take veterans like us who have become total homebodies, introverted to, to a sense, not always, but, but, you know, we don't go out into the general public a lot and we um, spend most of our time alone. It takes us and it gives us a surface animal that can, can, can help to be a buddy and a companion. So one of the things that when I looked you guys up, you guys are the largest uh, right. provider of service animals. And the mission was to kind of help stop the, you know, the depression you mentioned, the suicide rate and right. all of that. Uh, but one of the things we don't understand is how do you get paired up with the animals and how are they trained? Well, actually, um, once we do the application process and we, we you know, they access a series of questions of, what, how might a service animal benefit us? And um, once we do the application and we, we, we fill it out and we tell them everything, hey, I suffer from this, 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 and this, and I think a service animal will help me in these areas to get back to becoming a better citizen, uh, having a better life, a more comfortable lifestyle. And, um, and, and once we, we, we um, get to that point, and then they start, they, you know, they get these dogs that are, um, um, you know, they are... Um, you know, the animals, um, they're saving the animal off the streets, um, rescues, and then they're saving us, the veteran, as well. And they get these dogs and they train them up for, for what our special needs are. And by the time we get to the school, uh, which is a 21-day lock-in, you, you, um, and, and they introduce you to your, your, your dog on the second day, the, the, the first thing they do in the morning is they go back and make sure that the application is 100% accurate and that they have gotten the right dog for the right service member. And, and if there's any tweaking need to be done, and then they get there and they, um, and, and, and they, you meet your dog. Yeah. You, you know? Now, I understand the wait list can, can take some time, up to 18 to 24 months. Yes. Um, so it sounds like a process. And yes. then uh, that camp to get to learn the animal uh, and all of that. So when it comes to... You know, all that stuff you said, you, you, you have to apply and you have to qualify. I mean, it sounds like all of you should qualify, right? Mm -hmm. Well, pretty much. But, you know, the, the, first, the first step is to get a recommendation from your, your counselor, your doctor, your psychiatrist, or what have you. Um, and, 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 and they have to deem you basically will benefit from that because not everybody suffers from the same thing. A lot of okay. us who have gone to combat have different areas of, of, of stress and, and worry that we go through that somebody that might not have had a, such a traumatic experience as being in the zone um, might have. And so, you know, it's a pick and choose kind of thing, but the, the, the final say is with K-9 for Warriors because, um, like, like, you know, once you submit your app, any, any service member, I believe, can submit an application, but once they get the application, they decide 
who they think would benefit most from the dogs that they have. Right. And that's how you initially get into the program. And then, yes, you go on that long waiting list. I was in the 2025 class. However, um, I, being retired, um, you, you know, I was on a short list. And being that someone couldn't make the class November, they called me earlier and they said, hey, TD, um, you, you know, hey, we, we, got a, we got a class open. Uh, would you like to come? And I said, oh, yeah, sure. And and so that's how I got in early and got my dog. But, yeah, it's a beautiful process. Right. Now, the dogs, I'm sure, have to go through extensive training and probably more so than a regular service dog because right. they're dealing with your stuff. But then they're also dealing in situations like this where and there's a 1,000 people here right. and they've, they've got to right. adjust for that. So do you know how long your dog trained before you were well, paired up? Well, actually, my dog, he was... It's a unique situation with my dog. My dog just turned three years old yesterday. Oh, so you um, got and him early. So, so a lot of the dogs are still young, like 18, 24 months, two years old, what have you. And my dog, he was actually paired with another veteran prior, but the, it didn't work out with the veteran and the dog. And so he came back. And once the dog goes out to, if like my dog did, to another veteran, they have to requalify all over again to get back into the program wow. and to see if the dog is fit to be given to another veteran even. So luckily Cooper was, and and and, and when I got there, Cooper had Cooper was way ahead of most of the service animal, the, the individuals that's getting their dog for the first time. He knew, he knew the routine because he's gone through it all. And so, yeah, when, when I got Cooper, I, I knew that, that he was prepared just for me. Um, that, 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 that he was the perfect dog for me. Um, and, and, you know, taking him out in the community, putting him in all kind of real world situations, you know, take him, you know, to the airport, take him to PetSmart, the Walmarts or whatever the stores are, grocery stores, taking him in different environments, being around a lot of people helps them to break their anxiety perhaps. And, and, and to be able to do a better job for the service members that need them, like myself. Right. Because they, they've already been through the world, real world. And when they get out here, it's, you know, other than the people that want to touch them all the time, and they're, they're dogs. Right. You, you know, don't, you have to realize they're still dogs. Right. So that's the, 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 the biggest thing about it is, is getting the dog made it with the right um, individual and, and to do the work that you need the dog to do for you. Yeah. Now, this seems like a new life for you because now you get to go around and attend events like this and, yes. and Coop gets to go with you and stuff. Right. Uh, what's it like during that transition? You know, you served our country yes. and you came back, you, you, you went through your, your trials and tribulations, but now it seems like, you know, all of you that are here, mm -hmm. you're happy, you're thriving, uh, the dogs are happy. What's that, what's that journey been like? Well, you know, you know, it's a unique journey because um, it, it takes an individual who make most, a lot of us veterans, you, you know, like when we retire, like I'm retired, I sit at home alone, the kids are gone, I'm there by myself, and I, I, I don't have a spouse or anything, and, and I just want a companion, someone to keep me company, someone to do life with, someone to love on me as I love on them. The unique thing about the dog is that the dog's going to love on you if you treat the dog right. The dog will love on you no matter what. So um, I think the, it's a beautiful process, but, it, you know, it's, it's, it's the transition um, from, from, from having a, uh, um, you, you know, being by yourself to, to having someone with you, someone you can trust, someone who, you know, kind of takes the edge off of the anxiety and some of the other um, things that we go through as veterans, yeah, you know, after our return from the combat zone or retirement. Can you describe the benefit that you're getting from being here, organizations like ConnectWise and IT Nation who give you the support? What are the benefits that you're, you're seeing directly from that? Well, the, the primary benefit for me is that, you know, I get to talk about K9 for Warriors, and I, I get to, to tell you how great of an organization they are because they really are. I tell you for what they're doing, taking a rescue off the street and taking a veteran that needs some help in, some cert, in certain areas, and you're, you're saving the veteran. Um, because a lot of veterans put permanent solution to temporary problems, and, and you're saving a dog. And you made us together, and it becomes a beautiful family again. You, you know, so 
Um, yeah, I, I benefit because I get to come here and Cooper gets the exposure to, to come out in different areas and see different people. You know, this is a day where I allow people to to make a friend, him to make a friend with someone and they get to rub him out. He loves that stuff. He's a dog, right? As opposed to when we usually go out in, in mainstream, um, I don't let people touch him too often. Every blue moon, I let him make a friend. But um, yeah, I get to talk about Cooper. I get to talk about K-9 for Warriors. And I, I, I tell you, um, great organization that's done great things for people like me from all of the branches of the services and others. And, 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 and you know, I just want to promote them more, more so. And because and, Cooper's doing his job and, and I'm doing my job with Cooper. So, yeah, and we love it. All right. Well, Tim, I know your group is over there. You guys are getting ready to head somewhere, maybe to lunch. Yeah. So let me let you get going. I want okay. to thank you and Coop for stopping by. We'll have pictures of Coop uh, on the 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 podcast cover when you see it and there will be a link if you want to support canine for warriors the nation's largest provider of service dogs for veterans with pst d uh tbi or mst i don't know what those are but i'll put those in there uh the organization rescues and trains shelter dogs to become service companions for veterans in needs uh, it nation has been a supporter for multiple multiple years and we encourage you guys to do the same so coop thanks a lot yes thank you sir